Hi booktube, it's Friday and I have a long weekend ahead. I'm so glad. I'm sorry if my voice is a little bit um, croaky. Uh, we went yesterday to look at the fireworks and um, like the smoke and all of that, like I think messed up my sinuses because like my, um, my nose here, my forehead is like, it hurts. <laughs> so I think it's from all the dust and smoke. Um, but I had a really nice week so far. Um, we had like an unexpected, well unplanned uh, trip to the beach. We looked on Wednesday because Wednesday was a half day for me since I had yesterday off. And I was like, well, why not we, you know, take advantage of that time to um, to go somewhere? Because um, like just normally having like a two day weekend isn't enough time. I feel like to go to go somewhere and then come back like Sunday night and then I'm just too tired, uh, you know, for work Monday. And so I was like, well, you know, if I if we go on a short trip and come back, then I still have you know Friday, Saturday, Sundays, which is which is perfect. So we went to the beach. And um, it's so cold. We went to the, um, a beach uh, in the Bay Area, and it's it's so weird because here, it's like around a hundred, but over there it's like fifties and sixties, which is bizarre. It was like it's just two hours away, <laughs> but it was so cold. Um, I didn't get a lot of reading done, and actually I meant to do a vlog. Um, my first, I was I think I'm doing it. It's like I don't know how to edit or anything, but my boyfriend said, oh, he has time this weekend. He could like, you know, take all the clips and put them together. So I did like a little snippet of. Um, on the road with with my cute little dog uh, in the back who is just adorable I'll um, I'll put some pictures on Instagram so you can um, can see but anyway so I did that first clip and then I completely forgot to uh, vlog anything else because I was just enjoying the moment of you know walking along the cliffs and eating at nice restaurants and stuff like that and so so yeah it just completely went out of out of my head but anyway I'm here to do a Friday reads and um, I am being overly ambitious uh, for this weekend because I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday to read and um, since I got my little trip out of the way I think I'm just gonna spend um, a good amount of time um, reading. I might go to the pool or the lake and do some reading there. It's gonna, it's gonna be really hot um, but we'll see. So um, the first books I'm gonna mention are ones that have already started earlier this week and this is and they're all for read-alongs. This is Dune for Dune Tube uh, by Frank Herbert and I am not far into it. I'm just like right there. Which is like cool, I can actually show you where I'm at, uh, make uh, show my progress in these books because it's a physical copy. Um, but yeah, I am like not far into it. Um, but yeah, because I, I missed two days of reading, <laughs> Wednesday and Thursday. But that's okay, I have plenty of time to make up for that. Um, but yeah, this is um, a reread for me. The first time I read it was on audiobook. And so this one, like, um, luckily since I read the uh, listened to the audiobook, I know um, how to pronounce their names. Because um, besides the main character named Paul, all the other characters, and Jessica the mother, all the other ones have these like really weird names and like that um, the places have really weird names, uh, but luckily I, I know how to pronounce them because um, that's always like trips me up in books. Like sometimes if it's like um, a name I don't know how to pronounce, I'll just like form a name in my head and I know it's not how you pronounce it and just go on with it in the book or I can just skip that word and you know move on. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, it's all about um, a desert planet called Arrakis. And um, where I'm at right now, they're just talking about going to this desert planet. You're, you're getting information on, like, the sandworms, these really long, like, monster worms. Um, and you're just getting introduced to the characters. So, yeah, I'm planning to make some progress here. And then I'm also working on Lonesome Dove. I just started this uh, yesterday. And um, just the opening chapter where you meet uh, Cal and Gus like the main two ex-Texas Rangers um, slash Cowboys and you meet their crew, their like ranching crew and it starts off with these horses, uh, not horses, these pigs like eating a snake and, I, uh, and like they're like fighting over it and so Gus wants to push him off the porch and, and he's like sitting in like the sun's going down and he's drinking his whiskey and it's just, it's a very uh, memorable um, opening I feel like it really sets, really sets the mood like the tone of the characters and yeah I, even though I read this like I think it was like two or three years ago I still remember that opening so um, it was nice to get back to these characters and I really love this cover um the one I had before is like it's like old mass market but luckily I found this um copy um like a couple weeks ago uh, when I heard that um Lonesome Dove was going to be uh, discussed and then I'm also working on um Evelina for a buddy read and I am behind because I was supposed to read uh five chapters uh Wednesday and Thursday and then today but um yeah like I said I, I uh, I'm a little bit behind but I'm hoping to catch up and um luckily it's not five chapters it's five letters I keep thinking it's chapters but it's letters like an epistolary um book and yeah but so far I, um, I'm liking it uh the 
first like two letters I was so confused because um, because you're not getting it in you're not in their in their heads of different characters and you're getting it letter format it was hard because like they were just like throwing out all of these names and some of the characters have like two different names like you know it has like their last name or like, um, or their first name so I, was, I was getting uh, confused like figuring out who's who like I feel I felt like I need to write a chart out uh, just to figure out where these people are connecting um, but yeah I'm hoping to make some progress here and then um, I finally got from the, my library um, yesterday a book I've been waiting for I waited for all June but I didn't get it so I got it now so um, I'm a little bit late reading this but it's fine it's uh, Betsy and Joe by Martin Hart Lovelace and this is the eighth book and um, this is all about like Joe has been mentioned all throughout um, her high school Betsy's high school years as um, this character who also um, enjoys uh, English and writing and books and so you know they, they would have they would they've had an affinity for each other you know that um, they would have a really good friendship but they never do and so this book we're finally obviously by the title um, we're ho I'm hoping to you know see their friendship and maybe like their dating life um, you know how that how that goes and flourishes and so this is um they're in their senior year of high school and so far she's talking about how you know she does she wants to grow up but she doesn't want to grow up you know that that um that really weird stage of senior year you know like she wishes she could go back to being a freshman but at the same time she doesn't and um so yeah I just started it this morning and um, I'm hoping to finish it uh, later today so I can finally make my video um of what I of my thoughts and then so these are all the books I've been reading so now the um the next three are ones I'm hoping to start and maybe finish uh, this weekend we'll see like I said I'm being very ambitious with uh, my Friday reads uh, and so this one is The Widow Washington The Life of Mary Washington by Martha Saxton and um, I've never read a biography of of uh, uh, Washington's mother I read a biography of Washington I can't remember um, what's the name of that author but yeah I, I and of course I've learned about Washington throughout all the different history books um, featuring the Revolutionary War and you know, the be beginnings of um, America. But so this is sounds interesting because there's not a lot known about his mother. There's not a lot of, um, she didn't keep a diary, there's not many letters and like so I'll be interested to see like what sources uh, um, Martha Saxton uses uh, because like I don't know where would you get it from like maybe um, relatives or friends of friends who are talking about her in their letters maybe. But this is, um, The Widow of Washington is the first life of Mary Ball Washington, George Washington's mother, based on archival sources. So those sources, I don't know, I don't know what those sources would be, but we'll see. Um, her son's biographers have, for the most part, painted her as a self-centered and crude, a trial and an obstacle um, to her oldest child. But the records tell a different story. Mary Ball, the daughter of a wealthy planter and a formerly indentured servant, was orphaned young and grew up working hard, practically fr practicing frugality and piety. Stepping into Virginia's upper class, she married an older man, the planter Augustine Washington, with whom she had five children before his death, eleven years later. As a widow deprived of most of her late husband's properties, Mary struggled to raise her children, but managed to secure them uh, places among Virginia's elite. In her latest years, in her later years, she and her wealthy son George had a contentious relationship and often disagreeing over money. With George dismissing as imagine, with George dismissing as imaginary her fears of poverty and helplessness. And so, um, yeah, I, you always like I when I read about um, George Washington, he he really didn't get along with his mother. He was just like kind of put up with her. And so we'll see. Like this book sounds like um, she's making a argument for you know how she wasn't self-centered or nagging and, you know she did have maybe have reasons for you know struggling with poverty and she tried to give her children the best life I don't we'll see um, how this one goes and then um, I'm reading uh, switching from history to I'm reading a uh, romance book for um, uh, steeped in books uh, Sarah's um, choice for the each each month for the uh, romance book bingo uh, she's picking a, like a group read and so this one is wanted and wired by Vivian Jackson and same as last month this isn't a book I um, would would have picked up uh, of my, on my own free will, but I really enjoyed uh, last month's pick, um, Hot in Hellcat Canyon. And so this one is um, it's like a, it's like a paranormal romance. Um, <laughs> so it's not really my cup of tea, but I'm willing to give it a go. And so this is now that Texas has has succeeded and the world is spiraling into chaos. Good guys come in and come in unlikely packages, and love sprouts in the most unconventional places. Rogue scientist, technology enhanced, deliciously attractive. 
um, Heron. These are all, all these, like, I don't know, like, really good romances. Like, not good romances, but um, a lot of these romances have, like, weird names. And this, one, this person's name is Heron Farad. Um, Heron Farad should be dead. But, te but technology has made him the man he is today. Now he heads a crew of uniquely skilled outsiders who fight to salvage what's left of humanity. Art, art, artifacts, books, ideas, sometimes even people. People like Mari Vallejo. Gun for, gun for hire, Texan rebel, always hits her mark. Well, that's interesting that, you know, like this, the woman character in this is like the, um, is the one with gun for hire, an assassin. That's, that's interesting. So it says, Mari has been lusting after a mysteriously, mysterious handler for months. But when a, but when a buy the book hit goes horribly sideways, she and Heron land on the universal most wanted list. Someone set them up, desperate and on the run. They must trust each other to survive while hiding devastating secrets. As their explosive chemistry heats up, it's the perfect storm. Um, so yeah, this sounds like it's going to be like action-packed, um, which will be which will be nice. Um, because I don't think I've read a romance that's like um, action, uh, uh, like a plot. And so yeah, we'll see how this, this one goes. And then the last book, if I can finish all the other ones, um, then well, the other ones, um, Dune and. Um, Lonson well, Dove and Evelina are ones I'm slowly getting work my way through, but the other ones I'm hoping to finish. So anyway, so, so you get what I'm saying. Um, so this one is one I've been meaning to uh, get to, and it's, because uh, it sounds so interesting. It's Waging War, the Clash Between Presidents and Congress, 1776 to, to ISIS, and it's by David J. Barron, and here's the cover, and um, I really like this cover, because it has a cannon here, and then it has um, an airplane here, and so you can see, like, you know, like the advance in technology, um, you know, how, how we've changed in Congress with the, um, all the laws and the rules and, like, you know, the power of presidents. Oh, that's shifted. And so, um, this sounds like it's going to be fascinating. It says, um, a timely account of a raging debate. The history of the ongoing struggle between the president and Congress over who has the power to declare and wage war. And that's been a struggle. It's not just a current day struggle. It's been a struggle in a, um, a contest of wills since probably the very beginning. And so, um, yeah, this is just, it just sounds like right up my alley. Um, so, yeah, these are all the books I'm going to be reading um, this weekend. Wish me luck. Um, let me know what you're going to be reading this weekend. Um, I hope, hopefully all of you have um, long uh, three-day weekends. For at least for people in uh, America, because it's always nice to have a, have a three-day weekend. Um, but, yeah, thanks. I'll see you soon, book two.